Previously, on Doctype, we took a look at CSS selectors. This week, we're diving into selectors in CSS3. Then, ever wondered what the heck this is? No, really, the variable called this in JavaScript will demystify this confusing topic. So prepare yourself for a fiesta of pure awesome, because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by the Frozen Rails Conference and Barcamp Orlando. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that wants to learn a little bit of coding or a developer that thinks everything they make looks like crap, Doctype is here to show you the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your next project to the next level. All right, so if you're in Orlando or even anywhere in Florida, remember that Bar Camp Orlando is this Saturday, April 3rd. Definitely worth the trip. That's right. We're going to be there, and it is going to be Awesome. And if you can't make it to Bar Camp Orlando, you can just stop by your local Apple store because that's also the day that the iPad is coming out. That's right. We're holding out for the 3G models, but the Wi-Fi model comes out this Saturday. So that should be fun, whether you want to get one or just laugh at all the people who do want to get one. I mean, you can at least try it out. It should be a good time. Yeah, definitely. This episode, I'm going to be talking about selectors in CSS3, and Jim is going to be talking about the this variable in JavaScript. Let's check it out. If you watched last week's episode, the attribute selectors that I'm about to show you should already look a little bit familiar. Attribute selectors allow you to select an element based on, you guessed it, an element's attribute. The caret equals attribute selector allows you to grab an element based on an attribute that begins with the specified value. So for example, if you had a bunch of class names that started with the word green and had some text after it, you could use this selector to style them all at once. The dollar equal selector does the opposite of the caret equal selector. Here, you can select any elements that have attributes ending with a particular value. So for instance, if you chose to end several class names with a particular word, you could select them based on that. Finally, with the star equal selector, you can select attributes that contain a value anywhere in them. So if you wanted to find all of your alt tags that contain a word in them, this would be the selector to use. CSS2 already has several pseudo class selectors, but CSS3 adds a ton more. Let's check it out. In last week's episode, I talked about the first child selector, and the last child selector is similar. Let's say you have an unordered list and you want to select the last item. Rather than applying a special class on the last item, it's much cleaner to select it using the last child pseudo class. Next is the nth child pseudo class. Let's say you have the same unordered list and you wanted to select an item that was somewhere in the middle. So, for example, if you wanted to select the second item in the list, you would apply the nth child pseudo class to the unordered list and type 2 as your value. Sometimes when you're working with forms, elements can become enabled or disabled. With the enabled and disabled CSS3 pseudo classes, you can select form elements that are in either of those two states. There's another related pseudo class called checked, which allows you to select checkboxes and radio buttons that are, you guessed it, checked. Support for CSS3 selectors is pretty good across all of the good browsers, but Internet Explorer is just a little bit spotty. IE9 is supposed to change all of that, but that doesn't come out until 2011. If you want to start using CSS3 selectors in Internet Explorer right now, you can check out jQuery, which we covered in episode 1. When we come back, Jim is going to talk about the this variable in JavaScript. But first, if you're into Ruby on Rails or you want to learn more, you're definitely going to want to check out the Frozen Rails Conference in Finland. Frozen Rails is the first international Ruby on Rails conference in Finland. You'll learn from world-class developers like Chris Wanstrath from GitHub, Pratik Nayak from 37 Signals, and Yehuda Katz and Carl Erche from Engine Yard. In addition to the amazing speakers, there's a GitHub meetup and some awesome training sessions, like advanced Rails internals with Yehuda Katz and Carl Erche, as well as Mon MongoDB with Mike Duralf. Best of all, it's held right in the center of Helsinki, so you'll see a lot more than just an airport hotel. Tickets are normally 129 euros, but if you use the discount code DOCTYPE, you'll save 10%. Not only will you save yourself some cash and experience Frozen Rails, you'll also be helping keep DOCTYPE on the air. To learn more, check out frozenrails.eu and get your ticket to one of the coolest Rails conferences on the planet. To be able to use JavaScript effectively, it's important to understand how scoping works. Today we're going to be taking a look at scoping and the this variable in JavaScript. JavaScript actually has very simple rules when determining the scoping of variables. When a variable is used inside of a function, JavaScript searches the most local function to see if the variable is defined there. If not, it looks at the function that surrounds the current one. It continues to search upwards until it finds that variable declaration. 
In JavaScript, if it reaches the global scope, it'll implicitly declare the variable at the global scope. That's why it's always important to use the var statement when declaring your variables. So in this example, we have two variables, name and color. We can see that the name variable is bound inside the scope of the function introduce. But color is not. We have to look up the scope chain to see that color is defined in the global scope. We can understand how the variable color is bound by looking at the code itself. Note that color has the value blue in this code, but if someone were to change the value of color to red and then invoke the function introduce, it will alert I like red. This is because color inside of introduce doesn't refer to the value blue, but the actual variable color defined in the global scope. When we change the value of color in the global scope, it is reflected in the code anywhere that the color variable is used. Used. We call this static or lexical scoping. All variables in JavaScript use these straightforward rules except for one, and that's called this. The this keyword in JavaScript is a pseudo variable that allows us to have some degree of dynamic scoping. So how does this work? Let's take a look at an example. Now we create an object, John, and give it a name property, and a method say hi, which will be the same as our say hi function. When we call john.sayHi, JavaScript will bind the variable this inside of say hi to the object John. So when say hi looks up this.name, it'll actually be looking up John.name. A simple way to think about it is that this will be the same thing as the variable before the dot when a function is called as a method. We can do the same thing and create a Jane object, and it will say Jane's name instead of John's. Now there's only one copy of the say hi function in all of this code, but we can make it act differently by using the this variable and invoking say hi as a method on different objects. So what happens if you call say hi as the function, not a method of another object? Well, JavaScript will bind the this variable to the global object, which is the window object in browsers. So you need to be very careful how you invoke your functions that utilize this. We can actually explicitly define what this should be bound to inside of a function by using the call or apply methods that are available on all functions. Instead of assigning and calling the function as a method on the John object, we can use the call method on the say hi function. The first argument to call is a variable that should be bound to this inside of a function. All arguments after the first argument will be sent as arguments to the function itself. We could also call dot apply on the say hi function. The only difference between call and apply is how the extra arguments are passed. With call, we pass in our arguments one by one like a normal function. But with apply, we pass the additional arguments bundled together into an array. One last thing to note is that this is redefined by JavaScript for every function definition. So if you want to refer to the this of an outer function from within an inner function, you must assign this to another variable inside of your outer function and use that variable so it can follow the normal scoping rules of variables. Oftentimes to achieve this, people will assign this to a variable called that. But you should use more descriptive names if you can. For more examples of this and scoping in JavaScript, check out the show notes at doctype.tv slash this. If you've never been to a Barcamp event, then Barcamp Orlando is a must. It's an all-day event where the attendees are also the presenters. Before the day gets rolling, anyone can post a presentation topic to the big board with a time and place to go see it. Then, you get to pick the presentations that you want to go see. If this is your first Barcamp, we strongly encourage that you present. And you can talk about anything you want, from technology to art or even just washing your cat. Barcamp Orlando starts at 9 a.m. on April 3rd, 2010, here at Wall Street Plaza in downtown Orlando. To learn more, check out barcamporlando.com. Org. That's it for this week. Be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you're going to Bar Camp Orlando, come say hi. We'll be there this Saturday. That's right. And if you subscribe by iTunes or RSS, you'll never miss an episode of Doctype. So until next Tuesday, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype.